Although candles bring relaxation, memories, and comfort, their open flame can be hazardous if not monitored. That's why it's so important to make sure that you burn your candles happily and safely. And believe it or not, there's a lot more involved in doing that than just striking a match. Matt Leadham is the owner of Falls Candle Company and is an artisan candle crafter. And he's joining us today to show us how to make sure we're choosing a candle that burns cleanly and using the proper care. Welcome, Matt. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Brittany. Pleasure. Now, why is it important to be educated in proper candle care? What does this do or how does it benefit us in our candles? Sure. So, so with candles, I mean, first and foremost with, with candles is safety. You got to remember, we're lighting a fire inside of a jar. So safety obviously comes first, but also to make sure that your candle, um, that it performs well. When you're making that investment in a quality candle, you want that to give you the best performance and get longevity out of your product. I've never thought of it like that, a performance. Performance, absolutely. I like that. Actually, candles are, are a wonderful thing. Uh, I, thousands and thousands of people burn them, but are we burning them properly and kind of following those rules? Or there is some rules, and, and these are ones you probably don't want to break. Right, so we have some do's and don'ts that we're going to go through, and we also have a little demonstration. Sure do. So let's kind of walk through some of these, and then we'll get to the wick trimming. Absolutely. So um, candles, do's and don'ts. Um, our, our first thing is the candle wick length. That wick length, one eighth of an inch. That doesn't seem like much, but um, at home, take and look at a ruler, tape measure, and look at an eighth inch. That's actually longer than than uh, what you may imagine. But what happens is that that oil that's blended with our wax, this is what I call fuel. That oil is going to aid in the burning. If that candle wick is too long, um, here's your chemistry lesson. Um, it affects that carbon absorption. Too much of that, we're going to end up with um, some of that soot and that black smoke. So uh, we, we want to keep that wick at that one eighth inch. And why don't we want to burn it longer than four hours? Four hours, and, and that's a little bit of give and take depending on the, the can of manufacturer and the, and the type of candle, the wick, the container, um, some environmental factors. But like three to four hours, that's at that point what happens. And we've got a candle here that, that I can show you. That's what we've, what's happened is it's mushroomed. And so the top becomes um, kind of a fluffier look. The wick is now elongated as the wax is burnt down. Um, that again affects the carbon absorption. And uh, at that point, the wick has become unstable. So it's best to put that candle out and trim it once it cools down to that one eighth inch. And that last point on there was to make sure that the lid is on and fastened tight. I never put the lid back on. I usually yes. throw it away. Yes, you want the lid. When you, when you uh, are, are purchasing candles, you want to look for something with a lid. What that's going to do is that lid will protect the wax from any debris that's in, in a home or office, um, but it's also going to keep the oils conditioned um, and give you that best performance for your candle. So always look for something with a lid um, to protect your, your product. So we have some more do's and don'ts to go through, but let's, since we talked about the wick being yes. one eighth inch, let's, let's Talk Certainly. about the tools you can use to trim it, and then, yes. and then maybe I'll, I'll try and trim the, the mushroom one. Yes, I'm going to put you on the spot, Brittany. So um, first tool would obviously be a wick trimmer. You can buy them at, at any local uh, craft or hobby store. Um, wick trimmer, this one's designed to keep you right at that one-eighth inch. That's the, the base it of you. it here. It, it's very user-friendly. But you know what? You don't have to go buy this. At the end of the day, a cut wick is a cut wick. So right. if you have a handy pair of scissors around... A scissors will work great. A toenail clipper, I mean, somebody's got to have one of these in their home, yeah, right? You I can, hope so. you know, it's difficult when you get towards the bottom of the container, but um, otherwise you can go really heavy duty and find a, a, a wire snips and, and that'll do the trick. Um, okay. Anything to get that wick cut. All right, yeah. so hand me the wick trimmer. I'm okay. going to do the easy yes. one. Yes, so we've got our wick trimmer here. And then the candle. And this candle has decided to mushroom after so its a couple hours right of here. burning. Yes, so what you want to do is... Now, am I trimming this after every time I it's, use my candle? You, what you're going to want to do is look at, at that wick. The appearance of the wick is going to tell you, are we longer than one eighth inch? Beautiful. Look at that. Look at, look that. at that. Perfectly trimmed candle. So when you have this stopper, this with the wick trimmer that it comes with, mm -hmm. it kind of makes you cut it a certain way, but it looks like it cut it straight. But if I'm using a scissor or a nail clipper or something else, do I want to cut it straight across the wick or do I do it at a little angle? It's, it's probably with some of the other tools, it's going to come off a little bit angled. Okay. As long as that length is still around that one eighth inch, we're okay. going to be okay. So, you know, while the wick trimmer is preferred, 
don't feel like you have to necessarily make that investment. Um, there's a lot of different things you can use to trim that wick. That's great. You're hired. <laughs> yes. Call me for all of your candle for sure. Okay, we have a few more do's and don'ts to go sure. through as well. So walk us through, obviously, like you said, being safe. So using protective, you know, heat resistant surface, but don't leave it unattended. These are kind of things that we should know. But the the wax, keeping it from tunneling, that's that's what I want you to really explain. Right. So um, you know, a lot of the pointers are self-explanatory as far as surfaces and, and keeping it out of reach of, of children and pets. Um, I've got three fur kiddos that love, they're curious. So those are self-explanatory. When we get into burning um, our candle till we get a pool of wax, what you want to do is, and you're going to get that after about, um, a lot of these containers here, about 90 minutes, you want to burn it so that pool of melted wax goes to the edges. If you don't do this, so the handyman comes over, does a repair for you, and you're like, I want it to smell good, and he's in and out in 30 minutes, and you blow that candle out. Do this repeatedly, and what's going to happen? You're going to get tunneling. We're going to have wax that is stuck to the like inside of your jar, in, yep. and it's just going to create this pool. Um, at that point, really, you're, you're kind of losing out on your investment. You're, um, it's, it's sort of a waste of, of the product that you've purchased. So always burn so you get that wax to the edges. And when we're shopping for candles, what are a few things that we should look for? Yes, so when, when shopping for candles, the, the first thing that I'm going to look for is I want to see a, a label that, you know, it's hard to fit all of your ingredients, everything on a label, but I want to look for a website or a source of information. That source of information um, is going to tell us what's in it. Do we have additives? Um, things like that yeah. that you want to know. You want to know the background, and of course, we always like to say, shop local you can see where that candle is manufactured yeah. and we are out of time but real quick what do you mean by wax appearance so the wax appearance um there's certain additives that are used for color preservation things like that just remember that what you burn is what you breathe and so these additives um are are not necessarily good for you you look for a, a pure soy wax candle it's not going to have maybe a glass appearance at the top or anything like that it's going to uh, maybe have a, a duller appearance and um that's not that's not a bad yeah. thing all right, well, so much to learn about candles. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming in and walking us through this so that we can make sure we're burning them correctly. Absolutely. Thank you, Brittany.